Okay. Hello, everyone, wherever you are around the world. I think Zoom is amazing. It's an amazing technology uh, that we can connect people from all over the world. And I am thankful to Zoom and I am uh, thankful to the people who created this uh, tremendous uh, platform that connects people from all over the world. We are speaking about Israel, Palestine, and we have people from all over the world and welcome wherever you are around the world. Um, this is the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation Zoom simulation. We are simulating how a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine could make peace, how it could be created and how it can make peace between the people of Israel and Palestine based on the creation of a common government, a common government for the people in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza, 14 million people, a common government that would be created independently of the Israeli government and the Palestinian government, would be separate from the Palestinian and the Israeli government. It would be based on secular democracy. It's not going to be Jewish, not going to be Christian or Muslim. It will be a secular government, de democracy with three branches, a parliament, executive, uh, the parliament would be the legislative branch, an executive branch with president and vice president, and with a judicial branch. All of it based on equality for the people of Israel and Palestine, one person, one vote. And we are not contemplating, we are not proposing or, or advocating for the dismantling of the Israeli or the Palestinian government. We are advocating for the creation of a separate government for the purpose of making peace based on equality, because quite frankly, the Israeli and the Palestinian governments are unable to give peace. They have proven that they are unable to give peace for the last 74 years. And therefore, it makes sense to create another system uh, different from the system we have. My name is Joseph Avasar. My email is josephavasar at gmail.com. Please send me your comments after the simulation and um, I'll respond to all of them. I do respond to all of them. Um, we have a, a website. It's um, ipconfederation.org. It's in three languages, in uh, English, Arabic, and Hebrew. If you go to the, our website and you click the constitution, you will see that we have a constitution. The constitution has a preamble and it has uh, several articles. It's a, long it's a long constitution. It explains how the common government will be created, what will be the function of the common government, who could vote, who, and, and, and what's the function of each, uh, each uh, uh, branch, the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch, and how they will, um, uh, what kind of relationship and how they will create relationship with the Israeli and the Palestinian government. Like I said, it's an independent government, but it is working in cooperation with the Israeli and the Palestinian government, a system to make peace and to give security and prosperity to the people in Gaza, the West Bank, and in Israel. Uh, it's a very interesting read. You can also go to the frequently asked questions and understand this concept. Uh, we have it by way of questions and answers. It makes some people like it better that way, but read the constitution and read the frequently asked questions. I think you'll find it very interesting. I hope that our guest today, Menachem Klein has read the constitution. I met with him about a week ago and I hope that um, clarifies uh, the concept of a common government for him. Um, Menachem Klein is our guest today. He is a professor emeritus at the Department of Political Science at Bar Ilan University, Israel. He participated as an advisor to Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Foreign Minister Shlomo Ben Ami. He regularly participates in unofficial negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians regarding the ongoing conflict. In October of 2003, Professor Klein signed 
with other prominent Israeli and Palestinian negotiators, the Geneva Agreement, a detailed proposal for a comprehensive Israeli-Palestinian peace accord. He is a senior fellow with the Bruno Kreisky Forum for International Dialogue and a board member of Palestine Israel Journal. Professor Klein is the author of eight books and 63 journals articles, including Arafat and Abbas, Portrait of Leadership in a State Postponed. His, his book, Lives in, Common, uh, Lives in Common, Arabs and Jews in Jerusalem, Jaffa and Hebron was awarded by the New Republic as one of the best 2014 nonfiction books. We have other speakers. Every two weeks, we have a, an event. Our next speaker is uh, Gidon Levy. He's a journalist with Haaretz. Many of you are familiar with him. Uh, he, will, he was already in one of our simulations. And I think that his overall impression was good with our uh, proposal for a common government. He is invited again to speak further about the conflict and about our proposal. Uh, and that will be on October 2nd this year. Then we will have uh, Professor Ian Lostick. He is a pro professor of political science at the Department of Universe at the, the at the Political Science Department of the University of Pennsylvania. He will come in on October 16, 2022. I heard a podcast with uh, Professor Ian Lostick. His views are very similar to ours, with the exception that I don't think he, at the end of the day, supports the idea of our the idea of a confederation. Although I think that his that he was not aware of our uh, uh, formula for uh, peace or our formula for common government. So I'm hoping that we can uh, persuade him to. Um, to evolve to, and accept our formula. I think he spoke about the, uh, the land for all and, and the Yossi Bailey formula, which are very, very diff different than ours. But his political thinking, his analysis is very similar to ours. So we'll see how it comes out. Then we have uh, May Pundak. She is a feminist lawyer, an activist, and a social entrepreneur. Uh, she is with... Uh, uh, land for all. That's a another confederation uh, proposal made by uh, Israelis and some Palestinians. It's very different than ours, and uh, she was invited to speak. And if she accepted, she, they 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 uh, suggested her. I suppose I, uh, I I am under the impression that she understand and can explain it better in English, and she'll explain the idea of a land for all as a confederation system uh, to us. Um, I personally have uh, strong uh, disagreement with their system. I don't think it's a real system of a, a, a democracy. It's just a, um, uh, a two-state solution um, system, in my opinion. But we'll hear her speak. Uh, then we have, on November 13, Aaron David Miller. Uh, some of you are familiar with him. Uh, he is. He spoke many times on CNN. He's a former State Department Middle East expert, um, and he is. Um, I had a lot of exchanges with him about the um, our idea for confederation. Um, I don't know if he accepts it or not, but we'll see how it goes. But he's going to speak about the election in Israel, which will take place on November 1st, um, uh, two weeks before he speaks. Um, our simulation time timeline is about 120 minutes. We have several segments that are followed by five minutes. Uh, each segment lasts about five minutes, and then we will speak to our guest. Um, and I'm implying and will ask his opinion about that segment that we've completed. Again, this is not a speech, it's a simulation. And then we'll have a at the end an audience question and answer with uh, Menachem Klein, our speaker. 
we have a video that explains the idea of a or idea of a confederation. I'll play it. It's it's two minutes long and it, it explains it very well, actually. So there it is. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed and the two nations are another step closer to resolution. Please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. Okay, um, I just saw, I think Professor Elastic just joined. He's not a speaker today, but I just wanna tell you that uh, I did introduce your, your uh, future uh, participation. And I told the audience that based on the um, podcast that I heard, it sounds like your political analysis is very similar to ours, but, but your conclusion, I believe you said that the a, a, a confederation system is a camouflage for a two-state solution. And, but I don't think you are aware of our system. So I'm very, very happy you are here today. Uh, and then um, hopefully uh, your uh, opinion regarding our system um, will, I, I don't want to say change because I don't know what it is. I'm not sure you, you are aware of what we are speaking, but I'm glad you're here. Okay, so uh, before every, every simulation we now, conduct a, a survey. And in the survey, we ask the audience, you, um, at this time, do you support a common government for the people in Israel, the West Bank and Gaza that will coexist with the Israeli and the Palestinian governments? So we will, we will do this, the exact same question we'll ask at the end of the simulation today, and we'll see if we're changing. So let's take a vote right now. Um, do you support a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine to make peace? Okay, let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, um, so can you publish the vote? Uh, right now, 72%, uh, uh, 26 out of 36 vote yes. And 10 out of 36 vote no. So that's uh, 28% vote no. That's the pre-simulation survey. We will conduct another simulation at the end of the, another survey at the end of the simulation. And um, we'll see if there are any changes. 
Um, so that you know, a lot of the people that are here already went through our simulation. And that's why we have this high degree of uh, yeses. I don't think it reflects the common, uh, the, uh, the general opinion in the, in, the, in the general society of Israel or Palestine. All right, um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what we have at the end of the simulation. The purpose of the simulation today is to demonstrate how a common government, Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, could make peace between, the, between Israel and Palestine and its neighbors. In other words, not only between the Israelis and the Palestinians, but also within it, with the neighbors, such as Syria, Lebanon, Iran, um, and, and other uh, Hamas, uh, Gaza, and uh, although um, Hamas and Gaza, we are considering to be part of the uh, of, uh, of the whole system. So not necessarily making peace with them, but including them in the same government. We're not having a historical review of who is to blame. I think eventually it would be necessary to speak about who is uh, to blame for this conflict, who is right and who is wrong, who started this conflict, who maintained this conflict, who does not have a vision. Uh, but we are not really doing this today. I, I please try to avoid that discussion because we are speaking about how to create a common government and how to make peace. Like I said, that a historical review is a good, good um, um, decision. It's 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 a good discussion and possibly even more than a discussion, but not today. We're not anti-Israeli. We're not anti-Palestinians. We are for peace. And um, the speaker that we have today, Chaim uh, uh, Menachem Klein, is not a representative of the IPC. He was inv invited to stress test the IPC. So um, I, I don't want to get, I, I don't want you to get the impression that he is a representative and he's here to sell the IPC. Not, not at all. He's there as an, uh, a professor to stress test whether the IPC, in his opinion is could make peace or not. Um, we are pro-peace. We follow our own narrative. We believe that when a common government will be created, it will follow its uh, common narrative. It would not be a, an Israeli narrative or a Palestinian narrative. It would be the narrative of the whole area, the nationwide area, meaning Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel. I anticipate that we will have a rigorous discussion today. Uh, we're not gonna insult anybody, but uh, this is a very highly emotional subject and we will have rigorous discussion. And Professor Klein is aware of that and he, he, he knows not to, be, not to take it personally. Um, so that it is clear, we do not preclude other formulas for peace. We are saying, in fact, we invite people that have other formulas, and we don't think that the common government would preclude other formulas for peace. It doesn't necessarily have to follow this uh, uh, formula for peace, and we do not preclude other formulas for peace, including the Israeli and the Palestinian governments uh, reaching their own uh, peace agreements. We will ask Professor Klein these questions, or we will ask him to stress test the IPC formula for peace based on these three criteria. One, could the IPC formula attain peace? Yes or no? Is the IPC plan implementable? Yes or no? Is there a downside to the Israeli or the Palestinian government if this IPC formula is implementable? It implemented. I think personally that the answer to the first and second question is Yes, and the third question is no, but we'll see what uh, uh, Professor Klein um, uh, decides or what his opinions are, uh, keeping in mind those uh, three criteria. Um, in order to conduct the simulation, we are proposing legislation that we think the common government could pass, but we are not the common government. We are not saying that this is what they would, they will have their own thinking, they will have their own narrative, 
but we are just demonstrating because people say, well, what, what possible legislation could the common government pass? And we are just demonstrating possibilities of what they could pass, but not necessarily, that's not necessarily going to be followed by the Israeli or the, by the common government. We have many legislation to demonstrate, but in each simulation, we are trying to, uh, we cannot, we are limited by time. So we only do maybe two or three at the most, and uh, that's it. Remember, this is a simulation, it's not a lecture. So we are asking you, please refrain com from comments, but we do encourage questions. Questions are great, we encourage them. If I show you an airplane and you say, Joseph, this plane uh, will, is a disaster. It's, it's not good for the, uh, for, for the environment. I will never board that airplane. That's a comment. We're asking you to refrain from comment. But if you ask me, Joseph, how does this thing in the picture, how does it fly? That's a question. So like I said, I am encouraging questions. Please ask as many questions, substantive questions of what you see in the simulation, but you can use the chat feature for your comments. You can write whatever you want. This is delusional. This is doesn't make sense. Israelis will never agree to it. Palestinians will never agree to it. Uh, whatever you want in the chat, that these are comments. And you can also uh, speak uh, about it at the end, uh, about your comments at the end. But please refrain. Let us show you the whole picture and then uh, and then have your comments. Um, this is a simulation. And in part of the simulation, we need to do a, we need to have certain assumptions. But before we have the assumptions, um, let's agree on some facts that the Israeli prime minister um, is the prime minister of the people of Israel only. In other words, he's elected by, by the people of, by the Israeli people. He's their pri uh, prime minister. Palestinian leaders all represent the Palestinians only. Uh, they don't represent the Israelis and the prime minister of Israel does not represent the Palestinians. We are proposing a legitimate government for the whole area of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza that will be legitimate for the entire area and we are asking you as part of this uh, simulation today to accept certain assumptions. It's necessary, just, you know, some countries, um, like an army goes to war and they, they, they create certain assumptions. And, and they, before, they, before the war, and they practice their, uh, their uh, military campaign based on assumptions. It, it, that's done in the legal profession, in every profession, even the science, if science, they assume certain, uh, they make certain assumptions and they act based on those assumptions. The question is, are these assumptions realistic or not? But for the purpose of this simulation here today, I'm asking you to accept those assumptions. And these are the assumptions that we held an online election, that we had a platform for an online election, and the election lasted three months, not one day, not one week, but three months in the whole area of Israel, the West Bank, um, and, and Gaza. That includes 14 million people. In other words, you, I'm asking you to assume that we had an election and 14 million people, of course, with the exclusion of minors, um, were uh, given access to vote. I also want you to assume that 5 million people voted out of the 14 million. The 3 million Palestinian voted and 2 million Israelis voted. I also wanted to assume that the president received one and a half million votes and the vice president received 1.3 million votes. So I want you to assume that me, Joseph, I was elected as president with one and a half million votes and that there is a, Israel, a Palestinian lady, she received 1.3 million votes and we will rotate after two years. She will become president, I will become vice president. Now, so that it's clear, I do not ever intend to run to be president. That's not my agenda at all. It just makes it easier for me to conduct the simulation if I am the president under these assumptions. I also want you to assume that 300 parliament members were elected. 
I'll ask many of you to become parliament members in this simulation. That each parliament member represents 47,000 people. So that uh, as, so I'll ask you to, uh, to be parliament members if you are not the Israeli prime minister or, or uh, Palestinian leader. So um, let me ask the uh, speaker, uh, Menachem, are you willing to accept those assumptions or do you have any difficulty with those assumptions? I, okay, I have few difficulties, uh, but good evening, uh, Middle East, good afternoon, North America. Uh, greetings from Jerusalem, El Quds. Uh, first of all, on hearing this scenario, I wonder why the Israeli government, and the question also goes for the Palestinian leadership, but let's speak regarding the Israeli powerful side. Why the Israeli government will agree to a procedure, to a mechanism that bypass its own uh, its own power. Why should not? Why, uh, why, why should they? Why, why, why should they? And then the Israelis with their electronic let, let me let, let, let me can, let me can block me... any any internet referendum or so-called internet elections and and website and everything. So. Well, let me let me ask you. So, so you are basically. Um, I, I ask him, why would Israel agree to it and why would Israel not disrupt it? And, and before I answer your question, let me ask you a preliminary question. Uh, why would they not? What, what would be their rationale in not accepting a common government? Uh, okay, the rationale is keeping their power. I followed very closely politicians and the, the, the only thing that makes them crazy is that somebody is attempting to take over their personal power or political power. And how, how, how is this common government, how does it reduce their power? How is it? Because, taking... because there is an umbrella authority that bypass their ability to rule their respective people. So, yes, but but they but they have a veto power over it. It's not an umbrella. The, never mind. But they cannot they, they cannot make brainwash or propaganda or whatever. So the the people uh, okay. try to limit their yeah, power. I, I, I Politicians understand. don't want it. All right. So, but what about you? Uh, do you have any difficulty accepting those assumptions? Yes, okay, now substantially. So, okay, substantially, uh, I, what is missing, and I don't think it is by chance or mistake here, is the imbalance or there is imbalance in your uh, scenario, there is imbalance between State of Israel and Palestinian leadership. They are not based on equal footing. Okay, so but that's not, all, that's not part of the assumptions. The assumptions. No, you wrote, you wrote, Okay, let me go you, back to you, the assumptions. You related, I hear, I heard. Let me go very, back to the assumptions, no, Professor. I heard okay, very okay, carefully. Let me go to the said. assumption. No, Do you no, have, no. So, do you have difficulty accepting? Yeah, you already told us that the Israeli government will not will not accept will not allow a fourteen million people to vote. You already told us that, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, by by definition, it means that five million people could not vote, and 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 the whole thing would would collapse. But my question to you is personally. You personally, do you have difficulty accepting those assumptions? Yes, I have a difficulty because first of all, what we need is to have a Palestinian state. I know, but and that's two, not if, that's not that's not part of the assumptions. The, I'm showing you the assumptions no, right the in assu front of you. No, okay. the assumption. Sorry, the assumption is built on one state, and you 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 use the term 
leadership, Palestinian leadership, and you no, also no, no, accept no. them. No, or Professor uh, Menachem, look at the assumptions. The assumptions are that that uh, online election took place and 14 million people vote. You told no, us that the government of I, Israel will not no, accept I, it. I'm asking you, will you accept? No, I cannot accept a formula that states Israeli prime minister, Palestinian leaders. Okay. okay. But that's not I, part I of the- I would like to see Israeli prime the, minister, I'm sorry, that's not prime. part of the assumptions. That's not part of the assumption. The assumptions are that 14 million people are uh, given the opportunity to vote. The, 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 uh, whatever you think of the Israeli government or leadership or leaders or prime minister, that's not part of the assumption. The assumptions are that regardless of how you call these governments, the Israeli or the Palestinian government, we have 14 million, we have online election. Do you have difficulty personally accepting the possibility of having uh, online elections? Yeah, I would like to, I would like, yes, I would like to see, first of all, a division between the two people and uh, give it full uh, rights. Uh, uh, Menachem, you it's don't not, understand, uh, you don't no. understand. I'm not asking what is your vision for peace. I am asking, this is our vision. Here are the assumptions. And I'm asking you, do you have difficulty personally accepting those assumptions that we have online? Yes, yeah, I, I read the whole facts and and the item I of IPC elections of the entire area of 14 million people just concluded or that, but the, it's, it comes under the first and the second. I am against the first and the second. I cannot then move to the to the following. Okay, the first assumption is that there is online election platform that was a, that gave the opportunity for three for for people to vote in the last three months. That's the first assumption. The second assumption is that 14 million people, with the exclusion of uh, uh, of minors, are allowed to vote. That's the second assumption. The third assumption is that 5 million people voted. Now you told us the Israeli government will never allow that to happen. So no, I'm not, asking, I'm no, not asking you about the Israeli government. I'm asking you about you. No, no. I also, I, I would like, I don't want to, I, I am against building up the politicians as my competitor, as my enemies. Uh, I would like- That's fine. Bring... I'm not asking you to accept it. No, you but could, this is- You the, can have a is... lot of things in this world that are happening that you are against. I am asking you, no. are you able to assume- No, I, I cannot because- Okay, because... all right, let's go on because we're not getting anywhere. Uh, okay, so you're not willing to accept uh, the, does the audience have any difficulty accepting those assumptions? If so, please raise your hand and tell me what is your difficulty in accepting those. Yeah, uh, Frank Wilner, please unmute. Yep, thank you. It's Frankie. But um, so, Joseph, I think one of the issues that several of us have expressed concern about is that we think of a confederation as a relationship between two entities. And in this case, one entity is a state. And the other entity is actually territories occupied by that state. So that inequality is bothering some of us. If I understand your proposal, okay. it's- uh, uh, Look, we are talking about the assumptions. We're not talking about the whole idea. We need to focus here. The question is about the assumptions. Do you have difficulty accepting the possibility, the assumption? Is this completely out of line in your mind? that we create online election. That's all, We're not, I'm not asking you to, to, to voice an opinion about whether the Confederation is a good idea, whether it meets the uh, definition or not. I'm asking you, do you have any difficulty accepting the assumption that 14 million people will, are allowed to vote? That's all. 
what I was going to say is I think part of the reason we have a concern is that we're not clear that it's the people who are voting directly for these this entity and that the the others but, the but state that, but, but that this assumption that assumes that it is the 14 million people that I, 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 this is this the assumption is that they are permitted to vote they've had three months to vote and they voted that's the assumption Len, and, and you may say okay uh i think i i think what menachem is uh is caught with is the same thing that i believe is you need a two-state solution first and then okay. you can have a vote and i think that's okay. where it's well, starting from okay all right that's 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 your opposition to the idea of a common government i understand that but that's not part of the assumption any other questions regarding the assumptions we need to move on okay I believe that these assumptions are possible. I believe that it is possible to create online election. I think that if we spend one day of, of uh, what Israel and, Pal and Gaza are spending on, on, on uh, war, one day, $100 million per day, if we spend $100 million, these assumptions are achievable. But let's go on. We are asking the uh, the audience, so first of all, we need a, a person to be a volunteer uh, to be the Prime Minister of Israel. Do we have a volunteer beside Len Bennett? I know, Len, you want to be a volunteer. Do we have any someone who wants to be the Prime Minister of Israel in this simulation to, to play this, the Prime Minister of Israel? Do I have someone, a volunteer? So I guess, Len, we, you're, you're the one, right? Okay, thank you. Okay. Do we have a Hamas leader, someone who is willing to act as Hamas leader? Um, I can if you want. Okay. By the way, um, uh, Menachem, are you willing to act as uh, Israeli prime minister in this uh, simulation? No. Okay. But um, I, I would like to ask why you divide between Hamas and West Bank? Because that, uh, because we are here for peace. And, and uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go on to that issue in a second. No, there, there, there should be one Palestinian. Palestinian delegation and Hamas agreed with Abu Mazen on a paper that Abu Mazen will negotiate on behalf of Hamas on, on uh, with Israel. So okay. why, why I, separate, right. separate delegations? I'll, I'll answer that question because we are a separate government. We do not go by what Hamas and no, the the, the, well, no, but, we are, no, but they, but, but don't, representing don't the no, Palestinian are, I am, people, I am, the PLO I am their, is no. the only legitimate representative. Okay, but we are entitled to have our own narrative. We were elected by five million people. I am the president, and I choose to recognize that we need to deal with the Israeli government. The Hamas government and the, and I'll put it to a vote in a second. Uh, do we have a uh, so we have Hamas leader? Do we have a PA leader? Do we have someone who is willing to be the PA Palestinian Authority leader? I see two people with their hands up. I don't know whether they're volunteering or not. Judith and Anna. Okay, is Judith, are you willing to be the PA leader? Yes, I am, but I, I do go by Judith. Thanks. You go by Judith? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did I mispronounce your name? I thought you said Judy. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, now let's have the... First of all, may I say something, Joseph? Thank you. This is Anna. I'd like to thank personally Charles Fredericks for noticing the raised hands. Yes, thank you, Charles. <laughs> thank you, Charles. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so the rest of you, I will be asking you to be either Israeli parliament member or Palestinian parliament member. 
uh, in, this com in this common government. Um, I'm showing you a map of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, and I'm asking you to volunteer to act either Israeli parliament member or Palestinian parliament member. I'm asking you to choose the city upon which you, uh, you are a parliament member. And I'm asking you to be intellectually honest and to remain throughout the simulation as the representative of that city or that village. And some of them may be mixed districts. So in other words, like in Jerusalem, there could be elected by Israelis and Palestinians. In Gaza, you'll probably be elected by Palestinians only. And in Tel Aviv, only Israelis. But we are, um, and I'll ask you, if, if, if who do you represent if, if that issue comes up? So, uh, so let's have um, uh, the Palestinian parliament members now uh, identify yourself, vote yes as a Palestinian parliament member. Just vote so we see how many Palestinian parliament members we have. Okay, one more second to vote. And you can join later if you feel uneasy at this time. Okay, so publish the vote. We have 16 Palestinian parliament members. And let's have the uh, Israeli parliament members identify yourself. Please vote, Israelis. I don't know what you mean by voting no, but I'm counting you as Israeli parliament member. Okay, just one more second to vote. Okay, can you publish the vote? We have five Israeli parliament members. And if you wanna join later, but still remain as either Israeli or Palestinian, and so we have uh, 15 Palestinian and five Israeli parliament members. And, um, and we're going on with the simulation. Okay. Um, the first order of business. So we are assuming for the purpose of simulation, despite the fact that um, Menachem Klein does not accept the simulation, we are assuming, we, we are assuming in this simulation that we had the election, that 5 million people voted, and we have a parliament, and we have a president. I am the president, and I'm going to be acting as the president throughout this simulation. So I'm going to be assuming that I was elected by one and a half million votes. Uh, and now we need to pass a, um, uh, a um, constitution or ratify the constitution. Uh, Libby, would you be so kind as to read the uh, first page of the Constitution? We believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. Okay, so so that you know, this is an explanation of the important part of the constitution. It's not the actual constitution. The actual constitution is in our website. And the important part of this uh, first page, it says that we are, we do not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments or to uh, abrogate any agreements between them. They can agree to whatever we, they want, but uh, we are um, the common government for the whole area, and we are, do not intend to disrupt any agreements between the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. Okay, let's go to the second page. Libby, could you please read it? 
we voluntarily give the legislatures and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. We believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. All right, so the significant part here is that whatever legislation we pass that affects the domain and control of the Israeli or the Palestinian government, we will give them a veto power over it. Um, and uh, if they veto it, then it's not gonna pass, but if they don't veto it, that's gonna be the law of the land. Does anyone have any questions, not comments, but questions regarding this um, constitution that we just read, including uh, Professor Klein, Menachem Klein? Menachem, do you have any questions regarding the- Yeah, I, I have a question about, about the concept of government. No, I'm uh, asking, do you have a question about the constitution? Yes, but it, it is a government with, without force. Yeah, we just passing the legislation. Every government does not have any any power until it becomes a government until it starts passing legislation. At this no, time, but, you're right. It's no, we are only passing. We do. We only have a. We 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 are elected by five million people. We are a political powerhouse in this area, but we haven't passed any legislation yet. But what's your yeah, question? No, the question is, how can a government be called a government without force, without, without police, without army that impose its uh, decisions okay. on, yeah. otherwise it's not, it's an advisory body, it's not government. Yeah. Well, it's against Max Weber definition of government. Every, every democracy first starts without having uh, power until it, but when you have the election, then it gets legitimacy from the people. And we are, we just got legitimacy from 5 million people. So that's our power to pass legislation, just like any democracy around the world, their power to pass legislation and to enforce the legislation is based on their legitimacy. Any other questions? Yeah, I have another question because I think that we agree that there is no force, therefore it is an advisory body. It's not a government, classical government, but I have also another question. Uh, what do you mean by secular if in a region that is that, that religion, regardless which one, is so dominant. How can how you can impose a secular entity or government or body or or call for the people to accept secular rule over a religious societies? All right. Let's see if the uh, parliament uh, vote on this. Any other uh, any other question? Yeah, Anna, please unmute. Yes, I would like to ask, how is the veto power tool, how do you think it's going to work? Because it appears to me that's going to be uh, a no way out. Well, the, that's a good question. Wait until we continue on with the simulation and we'll see. You'll, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll demonstrate for you how it will work, because that's why we ask people to act as is Israeli or Palestinian uh, 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 government leaders in order to give them the veto power. So wait and see, yes. you, you'll see how, it, any other Thank questions? You. And Frankly? to Menahem's comment on the uh, absence of an army or a police force. In any other questions? Democracy. Yes, may I add this because I didn't finish actually my comment? 
I'm, I'm asking for questions, not comments. Please put your comments on the chat or wait until the end. The question is, we have business to do, yeah. okay? We yes. are- this How is about the question like, can we not adopt Switzerland's mode? No army. Okay, I'm sorry. This is a question about this, the constitution that is in yes, front of you, okay? Can, is there any question Great. about the constitution? Yes, it's about the executive. Police and army are part of the executive. That is why I mentioned it. Thank you. Any question about the, the constitution that is in front of you? Okay, ha let's have a vote. Let's have um, the- Sorry, I did have a question and Dan just told me to unmute. Could you explain again, Joseph, how we can have a confederation before we have two states? Yeah, just do it. We can, this goes to the assumptions. The two state solution has been tried since 1947. Um, and, and in my, in my uh, uh, opinion, it's really a fraud on the people of Israel and Palestine. And, but we do not, we do not uh, remove the possibility of the Israeli and the Palestinian governments reaching any agreement, including two state or one state. But our purpose is for peace. And because, the, because we have the possibility of holding an internet election, there is a possibility of creating a common government uh, with voting online, regardless of whether the Israeli or the Palestinian government agree, or whether they try to sabotage the, um, the election. If they try to sabotage the election, that would actually expose them as, as, uh, uh, as governments that are against peace. Um, let's have a vote. Uh, we are ratifying the constitution. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members please vote to ratify the constitution. Okay, publish the vote. Uh, 13 out of 13, we actually have 16 Palestinian parliament members, three did not vote. Um, so I don't know if they left or they're there, but whatever, we have 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voting to ratify the constitution. Let's have the Israeli parliament members, please vote. Okay, can you publish the vote? 63% um, of the Israeli uh, uh, parliament member ratified, 38% uh, did not. Those uh, Israeli parliament members, unless they change their mind, will be um, dismissed from the parliament because in order to be part of the parliament, you have to accept the constitution just like in any democracy around the world. So um, those uh, three are, uh, unless you change your mind and accept the constitution, you will not be allowed to vote in any of the, uh, uh, the election because you will be dismissed from the uh, uh, parliament. You will not be part of the parliament. You are not part of the parliament and you cannot vote on legislation because you are not part of the parliament. So could you please identify yourself, the three, uh, who you are, who voted no? Could you please identify yourself? The Israeli parliament members who voted no. Okay, so that you know, when we have the real election, it's not gonna be a, a anonymous uh, voting. It will be an open voting. So maybe we should take the Israeli parliament member voting again. Can we do the uh, Israeli uh, uh, ratify the constitution? Dan, can you run it again? Israeli parliament members, could you, could you please vote? Okay, so now we have uh, 70, 80, 
I'm sorry. Okay, so we have 83% of the Israeli parliament members. One parliament member voted no. Uh, so again, um, you will be dismissed. Could you please identify who you are? The Israeli parliament member who voted, who voted against ratifying the um, constitution. Okay, so someone voted no, but doesn't want to identify himself. Uh, we'll just go on, but um, you are not allowed to vote in any of the legislation that are coming up because in any parliament, all parliament members need to accept the constitution. That's in every democracy around the world. All right, let's go to the first order of business. And, and in that case, the runner up would be uh, yes. become, become yes. a... Yeah, so I just want to uh, respond to some of the objections that are coming. Um, I don't, this is to um, uh, Menachem directly. I don't see the Israelis have a reason to object. They will never I, be able to articulate a reason to object to a common government. Um, I think that it is possible to create a common government. Israelis and Palestinians are not a monolithic society. There will be enough Israelis and enough Palestinians to make up the 5 million people who voted. The Israeli government does not have, or the Palestinian government, they do not have the legal authority to object. They don't have the moral authority to object because they have not been able to give peace to their people for 74 years. They will lose legitimacy if they try to object. And they never attempted to disrupt any of the activities we have or previous election. And we did have previous election in December of um, 12, 2012, we had an election. We had a full page ad in the New York Times. This is real, not simulated, but real uh, full page ad in the New York Times uh, that announced the, the election. Um, and the Israeli or the Palestinian governments did not attempt to disrupt it. Um, and we actually held the election. It was not successful because there was no, uh, but this is how it went online. I, we just captured uh, one page from the actual election. Uh, we had uh, uh, total candidates uh, for president. We had 152 parliament uh, president and we had um, uh, uh, candidates for president and, uh, but the election did not have enough uh, awareness and was not successful in the sense that because there were, there were not millions of people voting, it did not, it did not have legitimacy. But what the, the purpose of me showing you this is to show that it is possible to conduct the election and the Israeli and the Palestinian government will not be able to disrupt either for moral or technical or legal reasons. Okay, let's go to the first order of business and that is granting a veto power. Uh, Libby, could you please read the first order of business the declaration of granting a veto power? The Confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. We hereby bestow a veto power relating to legislation affecting sovereignty to the following, the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Hamas, and in the event of changes in government, this legislation may be amended or repealed. Does anyone have any questions, not comments, but questions regarding this declaration to grant the veto power to the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas? Menachem, do you have any questions regarding this declaration? Yeah, what, what do you mean by government? Uh, uh, government means that you, you have an effective power and force over people and territory. Right. Here you have just a kind of legitimacy by those who participate voluntarily in voting. We, <laughs> That's okay. it. So we believe that the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas have the power to, they have power over people and they have power over land 
And because they have the power, they have the power to disrupt our legislation. And therefore, because they have the power to disrupt our legislation, we give them a veto power in order to include them in permitting us to conduct our legislation and to conduct uh, and to enforce the legislation. And that's why we're giving them a veto power. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question about if there is a veto, uh, at least in the United States, uh, the Congress can override the veto by two thirds vote of the uh, House and uh, Senate. Does the proposal for the Confederation include any kind of a similar process for overriding a veto from either government? No. Okay, I have a question. I would say they should. We should have that. Well, if you if if you have that, then then that would mean the end of the Confederation because it would give a good excuse to the Israeli or the Palestinian or Hamas um, to to uh, oppose the Confederation because they will say that this is basically calling for the destruction. It would mostly be the excuse for the Israeli government because it would say, well, they can override our veto and therefore what it really means is the destruction of Israel as a Jewish state. Oh, I, then I miss, uh, you might have misunderstood me. I'm re reference to each individual side. For instance, the Knesset can override the uh, prime minister who has issued a veto or in uh, the uh, Palestinian uh, parliament can override uh, a boss as an example. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, here there is no, within the confederation, there is the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. You need 55% of the Israeli side and 55% of the Palestinian side. Um, and, and, they, not, and they will have to pass the legislation together. But to answer your question about internally, in, internally, if there are legislation that do not affect the Israeli or the Palestinian uh, government sovereignty, yes, the president does have a veto within the confederation, such as a veto with regard to uh, appointing judges or ministers or budgets. But I here we are talking about legislation affecting the sovereignty of the state of Israel or Palestine. And would in, in that aspect, no, it does not have a veto power. Hey, Joseph. Yes. You speak about sovereignty, sovereignty mm -hmm. of the Palestinians. Are they really sovereign? In what way here, if you relate to Palestinian authority, in what way the Palestinian Authority is sovereign? It is a subcontractor of Israel. Yeah, again, we are we do not see it in the same in the narrative of Israeli. We see it in our narrative. It is sovereign for us if it is able to prevent us from um, from uh, 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 conducting or or from uh, uh, enforcing our our uh, uh, legislation. So it, the, the definition of sovereignty is based on our need, not in terms of universal uh, needs, uh, uh, universal definition of sovereignty. In other of words- Of course, no, of course. So if they can prevent us from doing something, then yes. to us that's yes. sovereign, and, and therefore we give them a veto power. Yes, they, they can, but much less than the Israelis. And they okay. and the, the interest that the they Israeli both have, government... they both have a veto power. Okay, the Israeli Joseph. and the Palestinian on every but legislation. Veto Joseph, power can I make a is comment? not sovereignty. Veto I, power is we not didn't sovereignty. Say, we didn't say that the veto power is sovereignty. I, I didn't say the veto power. We are saying that they have a veto power on what we believe is uh, is legislation that requires their cooperation. Clarification, please. Mm -hmm. May I ask, please uh, ask this question? Um, so uh, I'm a Palestinian leader, but I am not really 
uh, in control of anything. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but also when you say they have, who is they? When you say they have a veto, are you talking about me, me alone? No, it's as the very clear. It's authority? very clear. It's or very do clear. I do I have a vote? Do I take a vote and see who what my people want? I mean, how the veto no. is vetoed by the three, one of the three no, leaders no, no. of the government, or what? Okay, we already had an election under the assumption. We already have, uh, uh, we have a parliament and, and we are here to decide whether to give the Israeli government, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas a veto power over legislation we pass that we believe affects the sovereignty of the Israeli government and the Palestinian government and the Hamas, okay? So let's take a vote. Can I, uh, but I don't understand how that veto comes about. Do I just say, I'm, I'm, how does a, how does a, how does a Hamas veto something? I mean, who, say, is, yeah. who, who is it? That say, is yeah, wait, about? wait, that's a good question. Wait until this is, let's finish the simulation and you'll see. Joseph, okay. can I make I'll a go comment? along with it. I'll just, uh, that's a, I just don't understand it. Okay. Joseph, okay. can I make a comment? Sure. So, uh, Professor Menachem made some very good points, and I think they need to be addressed. Uh, I, I come from a European experience. I've worked in Brussels as a consultant, and I've dealt with European institutions. To me, the IPC uh, is more like the way the European Parliament was in 1975 when it was given, um, uh, uh, was created, was established as a uh, directly uh, elected um, uh, body, well, which Giacomo, okay, you 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 are acting as you are Hamas leader. Let's take a vote. We need to move on. Okay, we okay. All right, let's have the uh, Palestinian Parliament members. Do you grant? Do you are you willing to grant a veto power? Okay, let's publish the vote. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members agree to give veto power to all these three governments or entities, whatever you want to call them. And let's, let's have the Israeli parliament members vote. Israeli parliament members, please vote. Okay, let's publish the results. 75% of the Israeli parliament members voted. So, Congratulations, we gave, we have a constitution and we agree to give a veto power to the Israeli and the Palestinian governments over our legislation that affects their sovereignty. All right, let's go to the first order of business and that's a declaration of peace. On this declaration, uh, the, the separate government, Israeli and Palestinian governments do not have a veto power but we will ask them to join if possible. Uh, um, Libby, could you please read the Declaration of Peace? Our goal is to be a shining example for peace and tolerance. We believe in the respect for all people, regardless of religion or gender. We oppose the politicization of religion. We are committed to protect all people of all religions and to value the sanctity of life. All people are equal. All religions are equal. The practice of religion is voluntary and shall not be imposed. The land belongs to no religion and no war shall be imposed on the account of religion. We encourage all governments of the world to adopt this resolution. Does anyone have any questions regarding this declaration of peace? Okay, hearing no question, let's have a vote. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members please vote. Let's publish the vote. Okay, 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted yes. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Publish the vote, please. 
Okay, 83% of the Israeli parliament members voted yes. So we have a declaration of peace. Let's go to the next order of business. I am rushing because we have a lot of business to do and we're trying to demonstrate and answer all your questions and your comments. Um, and let's go to the first uh, legislation that does have a, a, a veto power, Confederation Police Force. Uh, this legislation would give the Israeli and the Palestinian leaders a veto power. Let's, uh, Libby, could you please read it? Equal number of Israeli and Palestinians on each level, different and distinct uniforms, independent of the Israeli and Palestinian security forces, in cooperation with the separate Israeli and Palestinian authorities, address sensitive religious, cultural, and language requirements, facilitate the operation of the joint economic zones, investigate corruption by administrators who refuse to teach tolerance, investigate allegations of intolerance and racist hate crime against Israelis or Palestinians, assist in the managing checkpoints, guard the par parliament building and threats against members of the confederation and facilitate access to and safety of religious facilities. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government, and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power, which may be exercised in the next 60 days. Does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? I do. Um, why would they have, I mean, I think we should just have one uniform for the Confederation police. I'm sorry, what's your can question? I, can I amend the... Um, the second little dot, different and distinct uniforms. Are you talking about some Israeli police would be, the Israeli police would have a different uniform from the Palestinian police? That doesn't make sense to me if we're having a- No, no, it's, it's different and distinct uniform from the Israeli or the Palestinian uniform. That we are- oh, right, so, so it is one uniform for the Confederation. Correct. correct. Okay, good, because that's, that's confusing. Yeah. Thank you. Another question, why would there be checkpoints? Yeah, there may not be later, but at first they'll probably okay. have to be. Uh, what, it, We are dealing with the existing reality as it is today. Okay. And today there are checkpoints and we are, and we are, uh, we are saying that the common police force will help in managing the checkpoints. Yes, if, if I may if, comment on that at the I, beginning. I, question. You I have don't the question. <laughs> Only questions. I'm sorry, I have uh, raised my hand. Is that yeah, proper? Yeah, Anna, yeah, you have a question. Thank please. you. Thank you. Yes. At the beginning of the simulation, you said to everyone that we're not taking on account current regimes, but we're building a fairer futuristic scenario. Checkpoints have no place in a fair and equal futuristic scenario. And I agree with uh, the lady who spoke before. I don't think we I can ever, have borders. I, 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 don't yes. think I, I don't think I ever use the word futuristic scenario. No, no, no. This is a simulation, okay? This is not happening this right now. We're simulation. building something for the future. Yes. No, this you is said that one of the principles were equal, you know, that we're overcoming what was happening in the past, what's happening right now. We're trying what is, to create what is your something. question, Anna? What is your question? <laughs> yeah. Why checkpoints that do not represent okay. a future? The the, 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 we, are, we are a common government. We do not install the checkpoints. The checkpoints are part of reality right now. We do not uh, uh, snip, uh, cannot have a, a magic wand and remove them. There is the Israeli government that imposed those checkpoints. We are against Yes. It. Okay? Yes, and that's so against the are, confederation, your principles of a confederation. So we cannot pick and choose. We cannot pick and choose. We cannot pick and choose situation, status quo. It's either a fair and okay. equal status quo, or we pick and choose whatever benefits one side. We, so we have we, to choose now. Okay. What What is your okay? Any other questions? 
Professor uh, Menachem has a question. Uh, the, I, once again, I, I would like to I, I would like to relate to, to to the checkpoints. The checkpoints at the moment, and you say you said that it relates to the reality. Okay, the current reality that the checkpoints are imposed by the Israelis, but the checkpoints are effective only for Palestinians, not for Israelis. So how, how comes that a confederation, a joint enterprise creates such a discrimination that works for the Palestinians, but not for the settlers? The settlers can cross freely. The Jews, the, the Jews living inside Area C can cross with no, freely with their own track. In, okay. okay. They, yeah, yeah, so, you, you're not asking a question. You you are against. against no, the, the, the question is uh, how. Are you are you how, against? Are you against? Okay. How this fits a confederation? It does not fit this a confederation. Is, this is a common government. We understand that we have to get the cooperation of Israel and the cooperation of the Palestinians. Okay, we are not here to manage the internal conflict of the political conflict within Israel or within the Palestinians. We okay, are so the question for, is let, why let do you assume? Your... Let me finish. So we are trying to see what is manageable under and what would be reasonable for the Israelis and the Palestinians to accept. And more importantly, if, if they do not accept, we, are, we, we, we want to make sure that if they do not accept, they will lose legitimacy, okay? So no, why, if, we, why? If, we, if we impose legislation that, that benefit one side or benefit one political, it, it 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 benefits one political, but it doesn't benefit the the total idea of peace. Now, if you want to destroy and dismantle all the checkpoints, we don't take that away from you. We deal with reality, and we try to 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 and, and we try to um, to benefit the Palestinian and the Israeli people as much as can. Now, what is the benefit of the Palestinians from the checkpoints? The benefit is, first of all, let me tell you, uh, 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 Churchill already said, perfection is the enemy of good. And you want perfection. And we cannot wow. deliver perfection. Wow. We are trying to do what's good under the circumstances, what Israel and the Palestinians could not object to. That's our formula. That's what we believe. Okay. The We're Palestinians not perfection. cannot. The Palestinians will never accept a discriminative checkpoint that works against them, that they are the only ones that have to be checked I because agree. they are permanently yeah, I, suspected. Yeah, I agree. But I, I think they would, the, 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 we think that it is much, much better in order to make peace, to create a checkpoint in which instead of Israeli soldiers, we have both. Palestinian and Israeli soldiers. We think it's much more humane. It's much more effective. I agree with you. It's not perfect, but we are not striving for perfection. Perfection is the enemy of good. And in my opinion, when someone posed the idea of perfection, it's really a poison pill to destroy the whole idea of a confederation. You can always, always claim that, that the legislation is not perfect. No, okay, about right. perfection and, and, and practicality. Okay, I have a question. Okay, so there will be or two any soldiers, other one Palestinian, one, one Israeli. But who will be checked by in the... We will have a... The, the president and the vice president are responsible for the Confederation. No, by the, the checkpoints. Mm. Who will be checked and by in the checkpoints? Both Israelis and Palestinians? We settlers will. and and the Palestinian citizen oh, from absolutely Nam whoever goes through the checkpoint will be checked. It's okay, not so do you expect that, that the settlers will agree? <sighs> it doesn't matter. We are a common government. It's not. It's not whether one side agree or not. 
We are the legitimate government. We have our own power, our own political, and it's not, it's, we are not here to bow to one segment of society. And if they agree or not, that's the end, end all. No, we are the common government. We were elected by 5 million people and we have our own power and we do what's right and what's acceptable to everyone. And Joseph, yeah, it's, 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 Joseph, you, Joseph you, Yvonne Frank, Yvonne Frank. Wants yeah, to I just have a simple question and this is a question, not an interruption or a comment. Did you say that the security forces would have new uniforms, but they would be separate Palestinian and Israeli uniforms? No, no, they no. were the common government is a separate entity. It this, the police officers of the common government will have their own uniform. It will be separate and distinct from the Israeli or the Palestinian. In other words, so it'll be a common uniform. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Uh, let me just draw a quick analogy that might help people. Please, uh, Charles, let's move to, uh, we, I have more legislation. Can we, can we take a vote, please? On what? <laughs> On this legislation, the Palestinian parliament members, please, could you please vote? Do you support an Israeli-Palestinian Confederation police force? Ah. Okay, uh, published the vote. 93% of the Palestinian parliament members voted yes. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Do you support an Israeli-Palestinian Confederation police force? Okay, um, let's publish the results. Sure. All right, 100% uh, of the Israeli parliament members voted yes. Let's go to the... Um, um, Hamas leader, Mr. Hamas leader, are you going to veto this legislation? No. Okay. Uh, uh, the PA leader, Judith, are you going to veto, veto this legislation? Uh, no, I'm not, but I, I reserve the right to, um, to, to work against the checkpoints in the future as we get more uh, power and we are more equal. We will no longer need the checkpoints, but I know we need them. We may, I'm not really voting for or against checkpoints. I am voting for this police force. Yes. And uh, Mr. Prime Minister, um, um, why are you vetoing this legislation? No way ahead of time, but I'm going to veto it. Yes, I veto it because it's not necessary. There's a PA police force. There's an Israeli police force. They cooperate when required. I think this is a major expenditure for uh, IPC. I just don't find it necessary. And it's just another, it's just going to interfere with the existing PA and Israeli police forces. Why so I veto it. Why are you concerned about the expenditure of the IPC? This is a separate government, separate from your government. Why would you be, why would you be concerned about the expenditure of our government? Well, you're taking taxes out of uh, my people's pocket to spend it. Now, actually, that's just a comment. I don't think it's necessary. There are two police forces now, and uh, they have their own jurisdictions and they cooperate when necessary. All right. This is just a third force. It's not necessary. Okay, but, but the Palestinian and the Hamas leader agree to it, and so they think it's necessary, and you failed to give peace for 74 years. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, I offered peace from 1947. Uh, no, you, you offered it. Uh, but, and and but they're you, not... Uh, uh, right. Offering is no peace. You have yeah, well, a checkpoint. You have a checkpoint, okay? Anyway. And you it's, have a checkpoint, and 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 the checkpoints are are in your way. We're not we're not discussing checkpoints, and it's and, uh, well, the, Brian, and then, uh, I'm not we're not discuss discussing it. checkpoints. I agree. I'm not going to discuss it with you. What I'm going to tell you this. We're discussing well, whether I, there I'm should gonna, be. I'm going to tell you this. I am the legitimate president of the whole mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. I am going to work internationally and within the people of Israel and Palestine to remove you as the prime minister, because I think I don't think you are a person who want peace. And I am going to demonstrate that 
that you are not a person for peace and I'll work to remove you and then we'll bring this legislation again. Okay, that's fine. Meanwhile, there's no police force because I beat her. All right, that's fine. So um, you'll you'll well, have to wait. You'll have to wait till the next election comes up. No, I'm not going to have to wait because you you are you are a prime minister with a flimsy coalition. Flimsy. I've got a huge coalition. I was no, overwhelmingly. You do not. You do I was not. overwhelmingly you, you, I'm sorry, voted, Mr. Prime Minister. You don't understand your own system. I you understand. You hardly that. have 61 parliament members. Okay. You hardly have, and you had to bribe all of them in order to create the coalition. And I'm going to work immediately to destroy your coalition. You have a flimsy coalition. You and don't... I'll see to it that you will be removed by the international community within a month. But the, interna move... the international community has no power over me. I okay? understand. They no do. power over me. They do, no, they, because, no, they do not. They do have because they are no, going they to. No, they don't. They do don't. because they are going to pressure their governments. I'm going to go through the to the United States government, I'm going to go to the UN, and I'm going to expose you, and I'm going to see to it that your coalition will be demolished in the next month. I would, I would expect that if you do that, my coalition will get an overwhelming majority the next time we have an election, All right. because they will not tolerate okay. this interference. Right. Let, let, let's, yeah, okay, you may be right, then I'll bring it again. I okay, have, let's go, Lynn. Joseph, I have a first sep, uh, suggestion in this, because this kind of, uh, of uh, challenge to one leader or the other can be set on any particular part of legislation and it will destroy the whole concept. The police proposal says, uh, reduce, uh, where is it here? Um, oh, yes, point. Wait, if you go back to the third point uh, on the police proposal, talk about economic zones. Where does it say here? Uh, no, it doesn't take the operation of the joint economic zone. Would you agree that in practice, as a very first step, that the uh, common police force would uh, would apply only to the joint economic zones? That's where we would start. Are you asking me, or are you asking the Prime Minister of Israel? I'm asking. Yes, I'm asking both persons. If you restricted the operation of the of this uh, new uh, police entity to very narrow uh, and. Uh, 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 clearly defined areas. Okay, that, that, that's a good Would point. That I, I will agree to that. I will agree to that. What about the prime minister? Well, I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessary to have this force. Period. So, I I don't see where it, where it's going to do anything. Okay, so you will not agree to limit. I would. I I don't. I I'm I'm against having a, a, another a third police force in that tiny little area of the world. Okay. All right. So. Wait, the logic of it is a joint economic zone is joint, meaning both sides are there. You, yes. Who's, who's going to walk around with a sidearm to enforce uh, thievery, et cetera, et cetera, and the uh, traffic patterns? You have to have some entity that's going to have some element of control there. And having the Israeli force control one and the Palestinian force police control the other is not a solution. A joint, a joint group would be able to handle it and it'd be an excellent test step to see how it works if right. if, if. Let, let, let's let's we need to move on um and that's the next one is converting kalanga checkpoint into an education and commerce center um libby could you please read that located on the main road between ramallah and jerusalem convert the checkpoint into an education and commerce center Construction of state-of-the-art hospital, reduce unnecessary hardship and congestion at the checkpoint without increasing security risk. Convert the entire area into an education and commercial zone. Expansion of the number of entrances and exits. Fast lane for frequent travelers, managed by the Confederation Police Force we hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government, and Hamas, and we bestow upon them veto power, which may be exercised in the next 60 days. All right, let's have, uh, does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Okay, hearing no questions, I am- No, 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 there is a question. I was on mute. Oh, okay, Rachel. I, I am very confused because I love the idea of this point, because I'm totally against these uh, 
inhumane checkpoints the way they are dealt with now. But this is a point, this is one of Anna's futuristic points. And before that, when people were speaking of no checkpoints, the answer or asking about no checkpoints, the answer was, well, we're dealing with how it is now. So I'm confused. What are we talking about? Is it now or is it the future? Well, this is we are now proposing the creation of an education and commerce center. We are now proposing this. This is not. This is not a, a the reality. We are proposing that. We are not precluded from, from uh, 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 proposing a, a future uh, Kalandia Commerce Center. We are not I'm, saying it is there. We are saying we are just proposing it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really confused. You haven't helped me with your answer. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know what else I can tell you. This is a legislation. We are saying we want to convert the checkpoints into an education and commerce center. That's our proposal, okay? We are not limited to uh, not talking about the future. So you are proposing to convert this specific Kalandia, uh, what's it called, checkpoint? But you yes. are not mentioning or thinking in this point, you are not thinking of the many other horrible checkpoints. In this legislation, we do not, we are not proposing any other educational center other than Kalandia in this legislation. But like, so I, said at the like I said at the beginning, we have many, many, many legislation, including a common, uh, 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 education a, a common uh, uh, um, economic center between Gaza and Israel with the inc including creation of a, a international airport international seaport but we are we are doing one thing at a time we are not we are not saying let's make peace on every issue we are dealing with one issue at a time We are just demonstrating how this common government could pass legislation. That's all. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. So, what will what will there be a checkpoint in Kalandia? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, there will be several checkpoints. We are look. Kalandia is a big area. Okay. You have people coming in from Israel, people coming out of Ramallah, and you have the settlements right next to it. So it doesn't have to be one gate. It can be many, many gates. It would be more humane. It would be it would be a center, and it would be managed by the common police force. It will be a border between Israel and the Palestinian Authority, right? No, read the legislation. It doesn't say anything about a border. It just says it, it, it you, you, you are if there reading is a checkpoint. If you're reading if something there is a checkpoint, that does not is exist. I'm sorry. If if this checkpoint exists and there mm. there is a gate, so people have to be checked. It's it functions like a border, right? Yes no. or no? No, it does not. It doesn't. It doesn't have. It doesn't have function as a border. When you go to a uh, soccer game, there is a checkpoint. It's not a border. When you go to basketball game, it's a checkpoint. When you go to any, that's a checkpoint. You want to create a different scenario in order to fit your political um, agenda. But there are, it's very, very common to have checkpoints that are humane, that are, that facilitate the uh, the uh, functioning of people in a humane way. But okay. you, let's have a vote. I don't, on, in, in, let's say professionally speaking, in any place global, worldwide, globally, if you have 
if you have a control point, regardless if it is a, a border control, a passport, visa, or a control point, it's a neglected area. You cannot build a, a education center, a commercial, and so on in a place where you have a bottleneck. It's impossible. It, it, it does not work anywhere in Europe or in a border zone elsewhere in the, in the globe. Okay. <clears throat> professor, in professor, what about every international airport in the world? In, in the question. In, 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 yes, okay, but in, in, an, in an airport, it's, it is isolated from the state. Here, you want to integrate it with the state. Well, it, it, the, the, every international airport in the United States is managed by a security force, okay? No, it is managed by the government. Fine. Not by and the here security. it is managed only, by only the government way. too. We are the government. We are the government. We are the legitimate government. We have been no, elected. but you, you are not a legitimate government because they, 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 we the We have been elected by 5 million spend. people. No, been... but, but the land, it's not, you are not a legitimate government because the authority over the land is the state of Israel or the state of Palestine. That's it. It's not you. I'm <laughs> sorry. The legitimacy comes from the people. The legitimacy, but who, who authorized, let's say, a building or constructing the third floor or the fourth floor on, on, on the checkpoint on the, in, in Kalandia. The, 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 we, the we, are, we are giving a veto power to, we are the legitimate government of the whole area because we were elected. We are more legitimate than the Israeli government and the Palestinian government because we, we are elected by the Palestinian and the Israeli people. Now you may deny our legitimacy we don't deny the Israeli legitimacy or the Palestinian legitimacy, but internationally, we are accepted as the legitimate government because we are the only government that held an election for the whole area. But legitimacy does not give a, 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 the power to build a second floor or the fourth floor or anything on the ground. This is for that, for that you have the government. No, the, the, the legitimacy gives you all the power, all the power to act because the, the, gov the Israeli government and the Palestinian governments, we understand they have their power to block us. We understand that, okay? That's why we are giving them a veto power. Israel operates or exercise or violates human rights although it is illegitimate, but on the ground, okay. Israel makes it. All right, so, so you, you are basically saying that Israel will veto everything. That's what you're saying. And let's- No, but I, I would like to emphasize the differences between legitimacy and power on the ground. Operation I understand power. That. We, we already emphasized that by giving the Israeli, we, we recognize the legitimacy and the power on the ground of the Israeli and the Palestinian government. And so we, the, we are expanding the options of the Israeli and the Palestinian people. And if the Israeli government decides to object to it, we believe they will lose legitimacy. That's all. All Joseph, right, let's have a vote. Joseph, yes. I, suggest, I suggest rewording this so that it's not converting it's, it's an establishing the center, but it's a modification. So maybe that would help. I don't know. Well, it is converting because the Kalanja checkpoint it's, it's, is a terrible area right now. It's not an educational center. It's, a, I, you know, but, uh, okay, let's take a vote, please. Uh, Palestinian parliament members, do you support converting the Kalanja checkpoint into an education and commerce center? Okay, uh, let's end the polling, publish the result.
Uh, 13 out of 13 voted yes. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members, let's vote for the Israeli parliament members. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Okay, um, very few Israeli parliament members voted. I guess the rest are shy or gone. Uh, but in any event, 100% of the Israeli parliament members uh, voted yes. Um, so um, uh, let's go now to the uh, Hamas leader. Uh, Mr. Hamas leader, are you gonna veto this legislation? Hamas leader, let's go to the PA leader. Are you, uh, Judith, are you going to veto this legislation as the PA leader? No, of course not. Okay. And um, Hamas leader, are you uh, available? Yes. Uh, sorry, I don't veto it. Okay. Let's go to the um, to Len Bennett and find out why he's going to veto this legislation as Israeli Prime Minister. I am not going to veto it. I think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, there are just several points. First of all, you talk about the Kalkia checkpoint. I'm not familiar with just what that means. So my interpretation is that where there is now that particular checkpoint, you're going to take a chunk of land and you're going to make it into an education and commerce center, which I right. think is a wonderful idea. Okay. Now, oh. physically, I don't see it because I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with that thing. Uh, the only point I want to make is, is uh, we talk about uh, the point is that without, it, without increasing security links, so which means that, uh, well, that's taken that into account. And the, uh, you have an indication of the, uh, 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 where was it, managed by the Confederation Police Force, but there is no Confederation Police Force. So, Going yeah. into it from the Israeli side will be managed by the Israeli police and coming from the Palestinian side will be the Palestinian police and inside they'll agree on how to work with it. But All I right. think this kind of thing is a great idea. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. I, I'm still going to work against you to remove you as a prime oh, minister. <laughs> I'm getting more popular every day. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Now let's go to have the post simulation survey. See if there is a change in mind. Um, after participating in the simulation, do you support a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine? Please vote. This is for everyone to vote. Okay, so here we have 18 out of 22 said yes, that's 82%. And four out of 22 voted no, that's a, uh, uh, that's a 18%. So we started with 72% yes, we ended up with 82% yes. We started with 28% no, we ended up with 18% no. Um, so I, I think uh, there is a definite movement in favor of yes. Uh, uh, so that's very, very encouraging. So now I'm gonna open it up to a discussion for everyone to speak to Professor Klein. Uh, and Gattas has, has his, his hand up sometime, Gattas. Okay, we can now ask, uh, yeah, okay, Gattas, you can ask your questions and we can go to everyone to ask questions. Got this? Okay. Okay, we'll go back to got this later. Uh, Professor Klein, do you have any comments after you saw how the simulation works? I am, uh, okay, let's say, I think that at the end of the day, some confederational arrangements will be agreed between Israel and the state of Palestine. But it's not the same confederation that you are in, you present, that you dream of or you put here. 
it will be a confederation between two states, one all Palestine state and one all occupied 67 territories state, including Gaza Strip as a one entity and the state of Israel uh, in the pre-67 war boundaries. Uh, confederational, several confederation arrangements is a must, especially in Jerusalem. But at first, the Israeli occupation must end and the Palestinians must achieve sovereignty or equal footing, equal status with the, the Israeli side while negotiating. We can, the, no confederation can come out once the Palestinians are inferior, are the subcontractors for Israel, got instructions from Israel, and, the, and settlers are spread all over the West Bank. This is impossible. And the Palestinians want, as far as I know them, the Palestinians want to exercise for at least a, a short period, full state authority. They, they never enjoyed for a one day state authority or the operating a state. While Israel is over 70 years a state recognized and a joyful power. The Palestinian Authority is a joke. It's not a state. It's an autonom limited autonomy, a subcontractor of for, for Israeli security operations. That's it. So they, they need to have, first of all, independence and state, state machinery and elections. Without it, nothing will move. Well, let me let me respond to that. Um, basically, you are saying that the failed Israeli government and the failed Palestinian governments are the only entities that will bring peace. And I am saying that since they are failure, they have failed from the beginning, and they are the creator of the problem, especially the Israeli government. The Israeli government is has created this issue. Zionism has created this issue by, by um, um, uh, uh, integrating religion and government by, they are, the, in my opinion, they are the least capable, the least capable of solving the problems. And not only that, they are benefiting from the problem. And when you create, and the reason behind creating a common government independent and separate from the Israeli government is a recognition of the failure of the Israeli government, of the failure of them to make peace and their inability and unwillingness to make peace because for them, peace is, is would work against them. It's politically unacceptable. And that's why we, I think that it is necessary to ignore those fairly, uh, failed uh, governments and to create a common government independent of them. Charles, could you please respond? Uh, Charles, I'm sorry I cut you off before, but go ahead. Oh, no problem. Uh, well, uh, let me go back to that. Just the, the analogy I was going to make, the re the problem people have a hard time with the IPC uh, proposal, I think, is because they want justice. And there's, there's a, a situation in physics where if you have a body in motion, if you directly oppose that body in motion in exactly the opposite direction, it takes a certain amount of energy. On the other hand, if you apply a, a small force to one side of that body in motion, and you keep applying that force continuously, you can turn that body around and have it going back exactly in the opposite direction with a lot less energy. And this is a situation, uh, my question to the professor is, given the reality of the situation, which everybody seems so can, uh, intent upon us recognizing in one way or another, um, given the reality of the facts on the ground, do, do you foresee how, to get to your idea 
of uh, justice. Do you have do you have a proposal of how to get where you're going, given the way things are presently? That that uh, you know, Palestine would have its own separate state that would be recognized. That Israel would allow this to come into existence. Um, without being overwhelmed by force, which is obviously not something that is possible. Uh, how would that change in the politics take place in, in your view? Okay, may I answer? Oh, please, please. Oh, yeah. the oh, question I, is to you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh no, okay. Uh, okay, yes. I'm, not, I'm not looking for absolute justice, okay, but the political justice, okay, that, that's one. Second, the, the PLO recognized a Jewish state already in 88, in the Declaration of Independence. It accepted the, the uh, 47 partition plan of the UN partition plan, and it's written in the Palestinian Declaration of Independence, the words, a Jewish state, next to the Jewish state. It was accepted. Uh, so the way, ideologically, the way is open, to have two-state solution, one Jewish recognized internationally and also by, by the state of Palestine and, uh, and, and a Palestinian state. Now, uh, I'm not looking for, as I said, absolute justice, but some kind of a justice, transitional justice must be implemented on the ground. The current situation cannot continue and it will not hold forever. The Palestinians will revolt. And if they revolt by, by guns and, and by arms, Israel will crush them down. If they go back to the 88 Intifada, the st first stage of the Intifada, the uh, unarmed Intifada, non-violent inti Intifada, or an unarmed Intifada, they will win. And, and we learn from other places in the world that that authoritarian regime can end if the people revolt against them. And it will happen also in Palestine. That, that's the way the ball is not is in the Palestinian court. Israel has no interest to move. Israel enjoys very much from the present situation. Mm. The Palestinians suffer and they will kick back. I am quite, I'm sure about that. And this will change the power balance between the two sides. And, and in that process, do you see the politics within Israel changing and uh, a reformist government coming into power that would be more amenable to uh, reconcile with the Palestinians in some way? Let's, let's look back on the, on the history. It's Rabin was not a dove, he was a hawk. Yitzhak Rabin was a minister of defense who instructed the army to break the bones of the leg bones and, uh, and, and uh, uh, hand bones of the Palestinian, Palestinians in the first intifada. When he learned that it, it does not work, he moved to Oslo. So Yitzhak Rabin was not born you know, a uh, picnic, uh, actually. So people change their mind if they face a war. Leaders change their mind, they are practical. So an yep. Israeli, pub, Israeli so, pub, public wait, opinion wait, 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 will wait. change. Uh, uh, Menachem, you're saying they're practical. You're showing they change their mind, they're practical. Wouldn't that apply if 5 million people vote? Wouldn't that, practicality apply at that time? If, if 5 million will, will vote for a different structure with different model than you presented, yes. But a diff what, if they, diff what if they vote for this model? That, it, it, it will not happen. Ishtar Rabin well, was assassinated by extremists of uh, you know, the far right. So, you know, there are extremists, on both the far right and on the Palestinian side. So my question is, the current politics has been held hostage to this, these extremists for generations. 
And I don't see that changing. All I see during, when election time comes up in Israel is, is that it's time to mow the grass again, you know, to convince everybody that the only solution is violence and that the one that can be most trusted to deal with violence is the toughest guy on the block. And that is not a formula for peace. All right, let's, let's, move, let's move on. Let, 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 let me okay. just call I would the like order. To, I would like to very shortly answer. Spoilers and those who try to sabotage the process, even the IPC model that you, Joseph, promote, they will be there and it will it is part of the process. One of the mistakes of Oslo process was that they did not accept spoilers and they did not agree how to deal with the spoilers. That, that was one of the lessons, and this is the, the this is one of the lessons that we should learn from the failure of Oslo, uh, Oslo process to deal with the, with the spoilers as, as it happened in South Africa. Both the clerk and Mandela agreed how to deal with the spoilers. That's the problem here, but Israel refused. All right, Let's, uh, let me call the order of uh, question. It would be uh, Len, Jay, and Ty. Are we done? Gratas is back. Okay, and, I'm ready. I'm ready. Sean, uh, <laughs> okay, if I'm if I'm starting, I want to start off first of all by saying, Joseph, you're being very prejudiced against Israel. You blame the conflict on Zionism. Well, maybe you should blame the conflict on on the Nazism and the Arabs were Nazis in World War II. The Hajj Amin al Hussein. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. am. I am sorry. I am sorry. You keep saying this over and over again. Stop blaming the Jews. And start blaming the Arabs for why there's a well, let's conflict. Let's look at let's look at the facts, Lynn. The facts. Hey, the Jews, facts are look. the the. Well, let, let me speak now. The facts are that Israel is one of the ten top countries in the world for commerce and for everything else and for influence. It is listed on the International Happiness Index as the ninth happiest country in the world, and twenty percent of its population is Arab. Go into any university. Go into any hospital, you'll see doctors, patients, nurses. So, so stop saying that anything oh, uh, can, is Can is I bad. respond? I, no, I no, you, no, no. First of all, you don't let me respond. You don't well, let me respond. You, you, you haven't let me finish speaking. And stop blaming everything on Israel. Had the Arabs. Wait, accepted, you're repeating the, yourself. No, no, let me tell you something. Israel includes. Uh, include Judea, Samaria, and Gaza by international law. I know you don't appreciate law, but uh, but it's international law it goes back to uh, to 1920 and the San Remo Accords, uh, 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 Article 80 of the UN Charter, which every country signed, including yours and mine, says that nothing that was promised to Jews can be taken away from them. You got that? Israel agreed. The Jews agreed to share their land with the Palestinians, even though the Palestinians were planning, not the Palestinians, the Arabs under uh, Hajim and al Husseini were planning to build uh, concentration camps to wipe out the Jews of the Middle East. Right. The Jews agreed to share their land, and it was the Arabs that rejected it. All right. Now can you I, can speak. Can I respond? Yes. All right. The reason that Zionism is at fault for this is because Zionism was created in the 19th century as a, a, as a land, a, a, as a philosophy or as a political movement to create a Jewish state in Palestine, okay? By doing that, they politicized religion. At that time, it, at that time, no, no, I, I, I let, okay. at that time, there were a majority, by far, of Palestinian living in that area. There were no Palestinian oh, Arabs in those days. You're not entitled to your own facts. You're entitled but you're, to- But you're making up stories right now, Joseph. No, no. They were Arabs, they were not Palestinian. Okay, it doesn't matter what they are, okay? To come in and to say to non-Jews, we are going to create a Jewish state when the majority is non-Jewish and the far minority is Jewish. And to say, we are gonna ignore all of you. 
we are going to create a Jewish state. That's not that, true, Joseph. It's absolutely. It's not true. Good. What, what let me, okay. Let look, me speak. Look, you know I what understand. This, look, I, I let you finish. When, 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 no, when, let, when no. I, I have to say something. No, the Jews, no I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Zionism no, was I'm not sorry. planning. I'm sorry. You let me finish. So no. when you come in and you bring a you bring yourself as a minority, you ignore the vast majority, and you say, we are here to create a Jewish state, whether you like it or not, that is the, that is narcissism, that is the creation of a conflict, that is the creation of the trajectory of religion, religious war. What they should have done is learn from what happened to them in Europe and this say- This was before Europe. This was, you're talking- No, Zionism Joseph. was as a result of, of the, uh, Herzl came, decided the Zionist idea because of uh, the uh, pogroms in Russia. And, yes. Okay. So instead of learning and saying, we are all equal, we do not want to politicize religion, what they did is narcissistically say, the vast majority of you, we are not going to, you're not going to be part of our state. You are not Jewish. We want to create a Jewish state. That's this is how, not that's okay. how the conflict started. No, it, that is, it, okay. Can you stop for a minute? First of all, that was not. What the Jews were looking for at the time Zionists started, when the Zionists were, go, were, were starting, you're talking about the 1850s, uh, was was still under the uh, Ottoman Empire. They were not looking to create a new independent state. They were hoping for, 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 uh, they, they for, wait, wait, wait you, have to, you have to stop talking for a okay. minute, Joseph. All right. I, I'm not, I'm not here because you're not entitled to your own facts. Okay. Well, the fact the facts are that the, the facts, facts are that most that, Israel, that the most Israelis take, a Jewish most state. Israelis came from the Middle East. And, and oh, they came in, in in after the creation of the state of Israel. That's right. They were thrown out of the okay, Arab they world. They came so in after the creation of the state of Israel. Of but the and, idea of and, creating a Jewish state was a major mistake. No, it's Israel. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, Israel. Yeah, the Jews, the Jews then, are paying yeah, for Good. It. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Joseph. The Holocaust okay, wasn't go good to, enough for you. Let's go to Jay. Jay. You need to unmute. I'm thinking of process and uh, implementation in all of the uh, conversation for the entire uh, simulation is wh how do these things happen or how what could they happen? Now, I know we go through uh, the voting on the different ideas, etc. But when uh, the conflict comes, when you say, well, look at the facts on the ground now, what is the reality that we have now? I come back to the idea of starting small. Where did we begin? One of the most recent uh, proposals I'm familiar with uh, of uh, land for land, you know, so the settlements stay mostly where they are, but the northern part of the West Bank occupied by Israel becomes uh, 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 additional land as an example for the, for the West Bank. It extends up higher as what I'm getting at. That the idea of uh, coming up with small areas as a first step to test these ideas. Uh, way back when, I remember someone said, you know, the problem with, the, with Israel and Palestine is they have a vertical uh, di division, that you have the West Bank on one side, Israel on the other, they should divide the entire area horizontally so that the non-religious secular would be the northern part of the area and the uh, religious would be in the southern area. But we, of course, we can throw that away for the moment, but the concept is to think differently outside the box into how would you implement by creating certain zones, small, small areas, small zones. I'm thinking Mondragon in northern Spain where they have an effect for what, 90 years, have evolved their own structure of how the, a uh, uh, cooperative uh, situation would evolve. In kibbutz was the same concept, the same idea where people would cooperate. But having a separate zone where the two sides would operate economically and culturally uh, would be a good start stepping stone. And I look at that as a beginning, a beginning area. And I would encourage people to look at small steps first, create building blocks, and go from there. Biting off too big of a piece at once and change the entire area is much more problematic 
than if we were to start small, prove the concept, prove the idea, prove that it works, then you spread, then you try it somewhere else, a little area, or you spread it, make it larger. Thank you. Yeah, well, I am very much against that idea because I don't think, I think that democracy needs to be created for everyone. And I, I don't see the, I, I think that saying, let's start in this area or that area is really a recipe for disaster. It's not a, a recipe for creating a democracy. When democracy is created, we have to think big. We have to think of what's good for everyone. And, 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 and by, by creating the little areas in Jerusalem or in Gaza or in just exclusively for that, it's really a poison pill. It's, not, it's, it's, it's a, a recipe to, to create a, a, to give a, a, a poison pill for the whole thing to prove that, um, that Israelis and Palestinians cannot live together. The whole concept of democracy is the removal of religion, it is the equality, and, it, and you don't start with just giving equality in one area over another. It has to be for everyone. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, um, uh, Ty. I think that uh, Jay has a great idea. And I think that the Confederation could be the 5 million voters or the 14 million voters, but they start with the industrial zone. I think it's workable. It's everybody votes on the industrial zone. That's a question or more comment. But my question is to Menachem, when do you think the Palestinians are going to rebel, wake up, strike back? Okay. Um... They already started, um, there is a growing unrest in the West Bank. Uh, in Northwest Bank, Israel faces more and more problems uh, operating freely in Jenin and Nablus. For instance, two days ago, in order to destroy one apartment of a, Palestinian, of a Palestinian, more than 400 soldiers, Israeli soldiers entered to, into Nablus and, and Ojenin. In, in Jenin, Jenin. I, I, I don't remember well which of the two cities, more than 400. 400 is a battalion. And, and I don't include in this uh, figure uh, the Israeli sources do not include the air force and the drones and the intelligence that covered and held these 400 soldiers on the ground, boots on the ground. It, it did not happen earlier. So the, there is a growing unrest in, in, in the region, in the, the territories, and the, the pot is boiling. Israel is, is doing all the mistakes, all the wrong things in order just to flame the, 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 uh, the, the area, in, not to uh, calm it down. So it is written on, on the wall, we see it, we, we can assume that once Abu Mazen is not in the Mukata and is out of, of the play, uh, things will be very different, very different. So uh, it's Israel is, is the ground, Israel relies on a very shaky ground, very shaky ground, short sight, Israel is short sight seeing and, and is blind because of its military might. That's it. And it will change. Definitely it will change. The Palestinians want freedom. They don't want the Israelis there. They don't want to see a settler. They don't want to see a soldier. They want to get rid of them. And once they get rid of them, they are ready to consider peace. Do you think it'll change with Abu Mazen gone for the better or for the worse? At, at Abu Mazen is the great obstacle for promoting peace for the last recent years. Thank you. All right, let's go to Sean. 
Sean, you need to unmute. Okay, Mr. Klein, uh, you mentioned earlier about the uh, the land, and you don't. Uh, you think the IPC is a uh, is a sovereignty? You don't believe IPC is a far sovereignty? It's either Israel or Palestine, right? Yes. Now I, I'm I'm confused with this because IPC is uh, voted with a million people to uh, to have IPC. But what's uh, what what? How do you how do you think uh, IPC would become its own entity? You know because. Uh, UN recognizes uh, Israel. UN recognizes uh, Palestine, but uh, but for them to have an entity, uh, it has to be recognized by uh, UN to be considered uh, like a individual government. So there's going to be a, a nation called Israel slash Palestine. Am I? Am I? What? This is my concern. So this is why I got confused because when you were saying about the sovereignty that the land is not IPC, it's either Israel Palestine, and then I got confused by that, and I'm I need you to. Uh, help me out with this. I uh, to tell me further about it. Uh, could could you yeah. explain your question better, Sean? Yeah. So you think you think the UN IPC should be recognized by UN in order for it to become a uh, entity? No, the the I the Israeli Palestine Confederation is let's say legally Confederation is in between two states. Federation is within one state, an umbrella authority like the United States for foreign affairs, for, for security, etc. And there is a kind of an autonomous, autonomous states spread all over the continent, okay? Confederation is a, an, an agreement, an umbrella that, that bridge over two independent states. It's not between an autonomy and a state. It's impossible to build it this way. Uh, building it this way helps the powerful side to rule over the weaker side. That, that, that's, that's my reservation of the, of the concept. However, because of the uh, geographical conditions of Israel-Palestine and the uh, very close uh, remote. Menachem, Menachem the, the common government that we are proposing does not have a weak side or a strong side. It's a common no, but, government for, no, both, I, for both the Palestinian and Israelis as equal. It's, it, okay, let me put it very clearly. So who, it's an who illusion. Is the, who is the weak side? It, is, is, a, it is an illusion because you, because you still talk on the present situation of a PA of Hamas dividing Gaza Strip from the West Bank, Israel and and, but, and but checkpoints, that's, but, but that's and not, taking that's, into that's consideration not, the present. That's not, it, that's not required. It's not that required. requires because it's not as, required. The, the confederation could be created, whether or not Hamas, whether or not Israel, or the Palestinian have their government. It's not required that they will have their governments. It Conf can be created without those governments. No, but confederation cannot be created without independent, two sides independent, totally independent with sovereign who, who, who power. Who said people. that? Who said that? It's because international law. You, international you, law. Okay, that's so it. so so you, let's assume that that's what international law said, which I doubt. You violate international law. You don't yes, need to Israel comply. violates you, you international law. Well, what, who will be arrested if we create a common government? Who will be arrested? By whom? No, it's, it will be just a obscure discussion on 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 dictionary.com. But this common government would be created regardless of international law, regardless of the State of Israel, regardless of the Hamas or the Palestinian, it's the power of the people. The okay, people, it's, it's, you, it's the people don't have to comply with international law. They can create okay. their own government. But but it's it's outside the world order. It's a kind of a la la land game. It's a wishful thinking. What, it's not, it's what not the world reality. order? The United States was outside the world order. Israel was outside the world order. The Hamas was outside the world order. No, but, why, is no, there, it, 
all of these are outside the world order. There is no world no, order. Israel is, there is, is no such no, thing Israel, as a world order. There is, is no such thing. This is just something that you no, created. It, it, Israel plays very well. Unfortunately, I am against the Israeli, as as you know, I am, I am against the Israeli policy. Okay, I am against the occupation. I am ag against the, the your, kind of an apartheid in the West Bank. Are, okay, your never mind. Your personal views do not matter. But Israel plays are, very well no, no, in the international order. Israel plays very well. Very are you well. Saying, are you succeeded. saying that? Are you saying that if five million people vote? the international community will reject that common government? Is that what you're saying? No, but is, is, is Okay, so what are you saying? What, what will, who will object that, that, to the common a, government it's if a, it's it is It's a created? wrong assumption that, 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 that Israel, five million people, five million Israelis will vote for it. it, it it's a dream. Well, if there is a, if there is a awareness, total awareness of the election, Total awareness, just like people are aware of the pandemic. If there is a total awareness of the election, and if there are 300 districts created, all of this can be done and has been done. What would be your anticipation of how many people would vote? It's, I, what we see on the ground is just the please, opposite. Please answer my question. How many people will vote if there is a total awareness? Few hundreds. Few hundred, okay. And okay, now Can when I, I speak with with other professors, they tell me seven million. So which professor should we trust? Okay, and 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 really, Let's what, wait and, and, see. and I'll ask you not not to insult you personally. I'll ask you the same no. question that I asked no, the okay. other professors. What is your knowledge? What is your expertise in predicting how many people will vote? I I I see what's going on on the ground. I live in the region. What do you see on the ground that leads you to believe that people will not vote? You don't what, see what anything I, on the ground. It, that, I see that question the has ground. not been no. That question has not been presented. You don't have any criteria upon which to determine whether people will vote or not. You have zero criteria. You have they a have, different I, agenda. You don't want it. Unfortunately, you, they I I the indications and the, the public opinion polls also for the forthcoming there is no Israeli single public elections. opinion poll about the common government. There is no single no, public but, opinion poll. There is no awareness of this. What you're saying is, is, is completely unrelated to what we are discussing. No, it's, it's related to the opposite and the, and, and the support for the opposite, for instance, uh, the Ben Gvir Smotrich party, they, it will, according to public opinion polls, they will they will form up the third or the fourth uh, largest party in the next Knesset. It's a yeah, race. There are fourteen million people over there. You cannot be limited no, by, but you by cannot, Smotrich. No, and, but 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 you, you, you have know. fourteen million people. Do you? Okay, and you, you, and you offer a new under vision. occupation. Under occupation, the Palestinians will will not be given a chance to vote for it. Under occupation, no, no way. Who no way. At them? the moment, Who? at the moment. Okay, look, you, you can't have it both ways. You can say, you, you, if there is only hundred people voting, why would the Israeli government, if you are accurate, why would the Israeli government try to prevent it? They will not. Pre they will not try to prevent it. Okay. The few hundreds. They will disregard. But they don't know. They don't know how many will vote. They have they, no they idea. Know. They have the. They have the. They have the electronic equipment and the Pegasus and all this. But the, they use the, it. No, but but the 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 votes take place at a future date. They have no idea if they if you are accurate that it will be a hundred people will vote. Then there's nothing for them to worry about. There's nothing. To... They, they don't have at the at the moment we are we are we are moving just in the opposite direction. We are we are moving to the opposite direction. We, we, we are moving in the opposite direction because of the limited vision of a Jewish state. Not Within because of the Jewish state. Vision, no. You're, the, 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 no, you're because you're moving in that limited. It's a limited vision. It's not a democracy, it's a limited vision. And within that limited vision, 
it's going in the, a different direction. But we are it's, offering a new vision, a new vision for Israelis and Palestinian people together. And and I don't think you can predict that how many people will vote. I cannot predict either. But let's have other people talk. Okay. All right, Sean. Um, you. One more question. One more question for Mr. Klein. Um, if you think this is going in the opposite direction, then what is the right direction in your opinion? Because I am. As I said, the, the right direction is uh, You're right. okay. Prevent prevent the next the next clash. Okay, the violent clash. But okay. if it is okay, but okay, if we uh, must go through it, then learn the lessons of Oslo failure. Okay, the the Oslo failure. We must learn the lessons of Oslo failure, and we must we must start with end of the game. Okay, not not a gradual peace process, not peace process, not process, but okay. end game sign mutual recognition between two independent states agreed on international border with a border regime that the border regime can in, should be include should be an open border regime easy crossing free crossing never mind how we call it confederational arrangements in economy and transportation uh, and commerce, tourism, and few others also in, regarding Jerusalem. Jerusalem cannot be physically divided. On the ground, it is impossible. I was once, I was in favor of physically dividing Jerusalem and I were argued in favor of it to Barak administration that accepted it, not the borders that I supported, but the uh, Barak uh, uh, government in Camp David and after, I think at the, what Israel made unilaterally on the ground in Jerusalem makes it impossible to divide the city physically, but, this, but sovereignty can be divided with Al-Quds municipality, their full sovereignty over Haram Sharif, full Palestinian sovereignty over Haram Sharif, and the uh, and full Palestinian sovereignty of all Hebron. Very few settlers will can remain adjacent to the border, but but land swap one to one proportion to the state of Palestine. Right of return recognized with compensation with an agreed number of Palestinian returnees to the state of Israel, either as as citizens or residents the, the, uh, and, and not, not thinking too far away of re-educating the two nations. The grievances and the anger will remain for generations. Mm -hmm. but, but accepting the other side narrative as a legitimate narrative without agreeing it necess necessarily agreeing to all its items or as, as, a, as a whole packet without agreeing, but accepting that this is the, a, a, a legitimate re, a narrative of the other side, possible. Possible also to agree that both nations have roots on the ground, historical and religious roots in, in the territory, because Jaffa is Palestine as Nablus, was once a Jewish city or, or Hebron, Israel, Jew, the Jewish people has roots, historical and religious roots in Hebron. But, but, but it's, it is possible to agree that, or let's say, achieve a mutual agreement of religion, religious and historical roots of the two people. That, that's a possible. Now, re-educating the two publics, it's, it will take generations. But we, we, we can agree on no further territorial disputes. That right. we can agree. Let's go okay. to Samir. Samir Twer. Hi, Samir. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Would, fine. Thank you. Wouldn't be one state with one secular government make more sense since 
the land right now is actually one state. I mean, in reality, it's one state. The difference that it's an apartheid state. And the solution is to end the apartheid, just like what South Africa did in 30 years ago. And that's, I think, it is easier solution and quicker and easier. And if Israel doesn't want that solution, fine, there is the other solution, two-state solution, which oh, the entire Arab world today, the entire Arab world is willing to go with it, including the Palestinians. And they want to execute the UN resolutions 242 and 338 and having two-state solution. So if Israel doesn't want this one, one state, and doesn't want two states, doesn't like the IPC, then what the heck, I mean, do they want? Why do we, why do we, no, 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 wait. Why do we need to give it that concern? If the Israeli regime is that stupid and they don't know what they want, why do we have to be concerned about it? They are not worth it. I mean, as, as, as the government is no good government. It's the worst <laughs> government on earth and the most stupid government on earth that you give it one, two, three solutions and they say, no, 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 no. Then what the heck do you want? You ask me? Are you asking? I ask you, I ask you, I ask everybody. I mean, what the <laughs> hell do you want? Well, let, let me just uh, give you a brief response. I think that a one state solution is the perfect solution, the best solution, the most democratic solution. Uh, it's the ideal solution, except that we have the Israeli government there and the Palestinian government. And in order to have one state, you need to have one government. And I do not see the possibility of dismantling the Israeli government or the Palestinian government. I just don't see that possibility. That's why I am proposing a common government that would ignore the Israeli government, ignore the Palestinian government, and become a secular democratic government for the whole people of Israel and Palestine. That is, to me is the, it's not a perfect solution, but like I said before, perfect is the enemy of good. And, and I think that the a common government, regardless of the Israeli and the Palestinian government is a good solution. It's not a perfect solution. Can I interfere uh, here or it's, right. it's, do you hear me? Sure. My, is it my turn yet? Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Menachem. Okay. Yeah, I, and, then, I, and then wait, uh, you, oh. what is your name? I'm sorry, Gatas? Gatas, yes. Okay, so you'll, Len, are you raising your hand or is this a previous hand? Yes. No, I'm this is, I'm waiting to talk. Okay, so then we have Len and then Gatas. But Menachem, please answer. No, uh, uh, okay. What Israel wants, Israel wants the present situation in which it divides between Gaza and the West Bank, between the occupied territories and Israeli Palestinians, and East Jerusalem is a different status, divide and rule. In the West Bank, there is a, a type of a mix of apartheid and uh, army occupation and settler colonial uh, society. In Gaza Strip is occupied from the outside, pure occupation. Uh, and the Israeli Palestinians are second class citizens in the state, in the, in, in the state of Israel. For and Israel, the, the Jews in Israel enjoy upper hand, and they, they are very happy. They are they are accepted elsewhere. They push to the side the European interest in peacemaking. They neutralize the United States, and they they, they are doing very well. So why 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 to make any change? The the the, the change the, that the, the the only party that is interested, has a vast interest to make, to change this situation are the Palestinians. Now, uh, for 
from the Israeli point of view of, of using force and imposing this current situation on the Palestinians is very rational. It has nothing to do with Jewish state and so on. It has the rational uh, choice of the strong side. Well, okay, I think... Okay, I, 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 I first no, of all want to say... One more, one more sentence for Ben, uh, uh, Len, what, just one state solution. If you have 50 50 percent of of uh, uh, residents citizens between Jordan and the Mediterranean, but and one ethnic group is much more powerful and advanced than the other, you continue the occupation or the apartheid by other means. One state can cannot be fully democratic under this circumstance. And I don't see the Jewish side giving up its economic and scientific resources to the to the Palestinians. I, I, I don't see them, let's say, um, dividing power and money and investing in, in the, uh, much money in one one state solution to the uh, to the to the poor Palestinians. They, it, it will look like South Africa of, of today. Samir, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I have a follow-up. I, I, I think, I mean, if, if that was the Israeli want to keep the status quo, uh, that means, I mean, this Israeli society is hopeless. It's damaged. There is no hope because here, I mean, any wise man in the world will think you have one, two, three solutions. One way, two ways, you have to choose. You cannot just ignore all of them and say no to all of them. That means something wrong with your mentality. That means you're damaged and, and, and you're out of the, out of the uh, society uh, uh, acceptance, I mean, out of the rules. I mean, you're breaking all the rules and everything. So, I mean, why, I mean, we have to give them that concern, I mean, hell with them, I mean, that's it. Let them die, I mean, if, if that what they want, let them die by themselves. Gradually, they will kill themselves because that mentality and that kind of thinking is, is it is destructive for themselves and for the Palestinians. I mean, they will end up, all of them did, because they don't think right. Right, okay, let's go, I, let's I, go to Lane. Okay, I just want to say to start off with, I agree with Son and with Menachem that there has to be a country called Palestine who are in charge of themselves and not be bothered by the Israelis and they should not be bothering Israelis. Uh, I want to, and uh, Jay, you had an interesting idea, but that's exactly what they did with Gaza. They forced out all the Jews out of Gaza. They gave it to Hamas, they gave it to the PA the PA lost it to Hamas, and instead of becoming Singapore, it became like Beirut. So that didn't work very well. I want to just comment, going back to the, uh, the San Remo, where Joseph talks only about the British mandate for Palestine. There were a bunch of mandates then. There was Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, Syria. They were all mandates until the individual countries could get organized, giving Israel to the Jews, uh, the, man, the British mandate to the Jews was like giving Lebanon to try to give it to the Christians and all the other mandates were for the Muslims. So it wasn't like a little group pushing out a whole group. It was, it was, it was dividing the area up so that the Christians could have some liberty and the Jews could have some liberty. That's what that was about. And, uh, and you know, and Samir, if you remember, with uh, with Clinton, they the with uh, Clinton and with Arafat, the every square inch of the West Bank and Gaza were going to be a Palestinian country, and Arafat refused. And so Arafat then unleashed the suicide bombers, which killed a thousand Israelis and wounded two thousand more, and that ended that happening of of having a two-state solution where all of the West Bank and Gaza was going to be one country. 
they ruined that. It was the Palestinians that ruined that. Now, the first thing that has to stop is you have to stop the terrorism and stop calling it for calling it uh, whatever you want. And Hamas right now is just an agent of, of Iran. And you and I know that if Iran drops a bomb on uh, Jerusalem, it's going to kill a lot of Arabs as well as Jews. So Israel's security is mostly because of uh, Iran. And uh, Israel's power is built because they have to fight, they have to fight with Iran, not with, not with the uh, Palestinians. And the first thing that has to happen is, is, is they have to sit down and divide a border up. And whether, whether two states, and whether that's based on, uh, on, uh, on the uh, uh, Abraham Accords and the uh, Peace for Prosperity Plan, it doesn't matter where the borders are. But the Arab world is fed up with the Palestinians, whether you like it or not. And okay, more and more get, people, go. more and more people are 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 are, uh, are supporting Israel. More and more let's Arabs are. Let's so what we have to do is stop fighting, stop the terrorism, sit down, make peace, divide up borders, and have your own bloody country and do with it what you want. All right, let's go to Gada. Gada. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, quite uh, happy to listen to uh, very different opinions. And for me as Palestinians who's living abroad and traveling back home uh, annually, I see a lot of difference each time I am in the country. And when I am in the West Bank, where I grew up, as well as in the old city of Jerusalem, I see the daily life of the Palestinians. And if they uh, don't, do not have their equal rights as the Israelis, and they will be suppressed by the superpower of the, the Israeli army, there would never be peace. And Len, uh, I listened to your opinion, and I guess I just have to send you my email because I have a lot of things to talk to you about, uh, just to listen to the, to the other side of the story, because your way of thinking, uh, it's more or less uh, I should say, uh, biased. If you listen to the other side of the story uh, and how the Palestinians think, maybe you change your mind because no one is interested in terrorism. No one is going to kill the enemy. But when you suppress your own friend, when you suppress your own son, when you squeeze your own son, then he will revolt, basically. The daily life of the Palestinians is like miserable, like hell. And this is how we have to think about it. If we are talking about federation, confederation, two-state solution, it's basically a wasting of our time. The only solution is one state. And as far as the Americans and the AU are supporting the Israeli government, it would never happen. But when the Americans and when the Europeans will wake up and they will start thinking, this nation where we have more or less 50-50 Palestinians and, and, and Jews, they should live together. And if you call them Arabs, you call them Palestinians, it doesn't really matter. We are talking about people, about ethnic group, about nation. And you are talking about yourself as a Jew. Maybe I am also a Jew. You came after 2000 years, I was there. Maybe I originally was Jewish, then I was converted to Christianity. And some of us were, were also uh, converted to, to Islam. If you check our DNA, if you check our blood, it's the same. Why on earth you have to have your right and I do not have my right? This is how we think. If we start thinking like this, then we have a solution. If not, it's just wasting our time. Sorry, thank you. All right. Um, okay, so let me go to the um, uh, concluding remarks. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll have uh, Professor Menachem Klein also uh, say his concluding remarks, and uh, and then we'll move on. All right. So uh, despite of everything that was said here or in support of everything that was saying here, I believe that we believe that a common government is a possibility. 
Um, let's start with the fact that the Israeli and the Palestinian governments were not able to make peace, are unable to make peace. And therefore, we need to create a new system, a new government for the people of Israel and Palestine based on democracy um, that, that uh, has equality and bring peace. The country of Estonia with nine and a half million people has 40% online vote. That means that it is possible to have online voting um, and it is possible to create a common government. Um, I would like to remind you that a daily war between Gaza and Israel is over a hundred million dollars spent. A hundred million dollars would make this a reality, would make a common government with a common election a reality. Uh, we need a grassroots financial support and we need to have an awareness of this uh, possibility of having a common government and we can make peace because peace is the only solution. It's not about continuing with the Israeli or uh, Palestinian narrative. The narrative has to be peace for everyone. So Professor Klein, do you have concluding remarks? Uh, I am optimistic. Peace will be signed, achieved, the present situation, which is a very, very grim, is only temporary. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Professor Klein. I hope um, my cross-examination of you did not um, uh, affect you personally, that you don't take <laughs> that personal. And no. this is a, an emotional uh, subject. And um, if I, you know, if we had any personal offense, uh, no personal offense was meant no. at all. All right. Yeah. Thank you all. And we'll see you. you in the next simulation.